Well, hello there and welcome to another interview with me, Jack Lucas Caffrey. Now today, my guest is an actor, a comedian and a photographer. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Brendan Burke. How are you doing today? How are you? How are you, Jack? Thanks very much for having me on. <laughs> so, um, really, the first question I'd like to ask you today is, uh, how did you actually become a comedian and an actor? Because that was the first two things you ventured into uh, in your career. Well, um, I went to the Dublin Oscar Theatre School, as it was called at the time, um, <clears throat> to, it was a two-year acting course and um i because i always sort of in, you know i was always like in school i was a bit of a a bit of a sort of a you know uh, i was into the drama i suppose you know what i mean but uh so i i did the drama school and the, the more serious the part i had the, the more people laughed so um i think the the signs were <clears throat> the writing was on the wall that I, I needed to go down the road of comedy. So what, basically what happened was I, I went into the international bar, the national bar, as, as it's called now, um, <clears throat> uh, back in 19, the early 1990s. And uh, there was a few lads doing comedy upstairs. Um, it was called the Comedy Cellar, but it was upstairs. And uh, so I said, I'll have a go at that. So I asked um, Barry Murphy, actually, who used to be with our pre match, he was hosting the show. So I just asked him, what's the story? He says, yeah, you know, put me down for a time. Just do five minutes, first on, second half. And he said, that's it, give me a date. And I think for the three weeks that I had to wait, I was like, terrified, absolutely terrified. So what am I after doing? And more times I wanted to cancel it. But um, I went along on the night anyway, and I, I, I got up and I started talking about the breakup of my relationship with some girl I was going out at the time and everyone laughed. I was dying inside. <laughs> and I told them about how, well, how much pain I was in and everyone laughed. <laughs> <laughs> they laughed at my pain. So maybe they were laughing at me, Jack. Maybe they weren't laughing with me. They were probably looking at me going, Jesus, he's a saddle. <laughs> <laughs> what a sad yeah. <laughs> so uh how, how how did that make you feel after the the whole crowd sort of laughed at your breakup during this well i think actually people were probably you know there was there was a certain amount of uh, empathy there like people knew what um i was talking about you know i suppose um and uh it was it was cathartic actually you know what i mean it was you know like to get up and and one to actually the relief of getting off the stage and not dying on my arse and uh just to get a good laugh you know what i mean there, there was the relief of that plus i suppose it was as i said something getting it out there you know feeling this pain you know and and tell it all in a comedy club and uh, the comedy did get bigger and bigger because you ended up going over to the Edinburgh Festival. So uh, what was it like doing the Edinburgh Festival? Well, the, like I've done a few festivals. Edinburgh Festival is just a, it's, you wouldn't want to have any mental issues, shall we say, um, before going over to Edinburgh because you're living in a bubble for a month. You really are. And you're in the newspaper every day. Every day, uh, you know, someone is, is reviewing your show. And uh, <clears throat> and in the time I used to go, they gave you a one to five star review. That was the way it worked. And if you got a one star, you actually got a page. When I think about it now, I don't think I think they've done away with it. <clears throat> um, they had the page of shame. So if you got one star. You were put on the on the on the page of shame. So if if you did a really iffy gig the night before, um, and so the next day you were looking in the at the in the Scotsman to see if you had uh, made it to the page of shame. But um, it was it was uh, tough going. I used to do about six gigs a day. <clears throat> like I had my own show, and then there was other shows that you'd host and stuff like that, and there'd be smaller comedy clubs here and there. So you know you you were 
first off, you, you, you host a show at two o'clock in the day, and then you were somewhere else at three o'clock hosting another show. And then at half four, you were first on at another comedy club over the far side of Edinburgh. And, uh, you know, and the thing about it was, like, you'd, when you when I was coming to a punchline, I would say to myself, Jesus, have I, have I done this punchline down the road uh, an hour ago? Or have I just have I done it uh, five minutes ago in the same comedy club? It used to be like your 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 head was mashed. It was like having all, it was like having all your all different websites open, you know, up on your on your screen, and you're going from one to the other. You're just like Bleh. so. It was it was tough going. It was tough going, but we washed it all away with good good Scottish 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 good Scottish beer. <laughs> At the time, back in the day, yeah. when I used to do that, when I was a young fellow like you, Jack. <laughs> and you also did some supporting acts for uh, Pat Short and Brendan O'Carroll. So, what was it like doing that, being a supporting act uh, for their gigs? Oh yeah, well, it's, you know, like doing their gigs is 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 great because you have packed houses and people are there for the comedy. You know, so. Um, it was it was quite easy actually because as I said, <clears throat> the more people you have in the room, usually the easier it is. You know because when you get a big belly laugh, it's everybody is kind of swept away with the the wave of of laughter. So it kind of you know you can kind of go along on the crest of the wave for for the, the time that you're on. Not saying that it was easy peasy, but you know what I mean. You had to be you had to sort of you know you know. Um, it depend. It depend on your your style of comedy. I suppose there are some comedians out there that would be slightly alternative, which wouldn't have really worked for you know the um, Pat Short audiences, you know. But um, well, for me, I enjoyed it. I used to support. <laughs> did support one uh, once for um, Joan Rivers one one night in in Vicar Street, and uh, she when she, she met me in the corridor. Of of the in the in the back rooms there, and she said to me, "Okay, Brandon, um, what material are you doing? What's your what's what's what her topics are you doing?" And I said, "Well, you know, tell me what what like name the topics." I said, "Well, I do this stuff about you know living in the Middle East. I'm doing that. Oh, well, I do this stuff about being in France. I'm doing that. So every topic I mentioned, she said, "I'm doing that. Don't do any of that." And walked away. <laughs> so I said, "Oh my god!" And because I like took her seriously, so and, and whether she was serious or not, I'm not quite sure. But um, when it came to going on stage, right? So packed Vicar Street, she says to me, "Right, Brendan, when you what? How do you normally finish your gig?" And I said, "You know." Like I said, like, what joke do you want me to say? No, no. What do you say to the audience when you finish? And I go, thanks very much. I've been Brendan Burke. Good night. And she said, grand. So what I want you to do is when they applause, I want you to walk off and I want you to walk back on again with your two hands in the air. And they're all going to go, yeah. And I go, and so you say, thank you very much. And you walk off again. And I want you to walk back on again, still cheering. I want you to walk off and I want you to walk back on for the third time. Right. So she was obviously setting me up, you know, for a fall. And what happened? So what happened was I went, blah, 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 had a lovely gig. And I went, thank you very much. Everybody, good night. I've been Ben Burke. The and they all went, yeah. And I walked off and I walked back on again, like she asked. And I put my hands in the air and I come off again and I come back on again and I put my hands in the air. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And when I went off for the, for like, when I went back on for the third time, Joan Rivers came out behind me on the stage you know, and she went, fuck off, Brendan, will you? <laughs> fuck off. Get the fuck back there. <laughs> and the audience thought this was hilarious. So it made me look like a bright spanner. <laughs> so, yeah, she was setting you up the whole time. That's what it was. You see, that was her kind of icebreaker. So when she came on, 
that the, the audience would laugh at her, you know, telling me to fuck off, get off the stage. Oh, God. <laughs> you also did a bit of acting, as I mentioned earlier. Um, one that you did was actually Fair City for a little while. So what was it like appearing on Fair City and uh, how long were you on it for? Oh, Fair City, yeah, living the dream. <laughs> you know, like I just couldn't get out the door of RTE, just paparazzi, you know, outside my door in the morning, like going through my wheelie bin, desperate stuff. <laughs> Living the dream. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Fair City was good fun. It was great. You know, it was good. It was good fun. Um, and uh, I... Barry O'Hanlon was one of the characters in it and Pat Nolan. And I actually made good friends with him. We're still in contact after all these years. So it was, yeah, it was good fun. And you also appeared on the Father Ted Christmas special. Hi, who's Ted and who's Dougal? Uh, I'm Ted and that's Dougal there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dougal, he's Ted. I need to over to say Father. What was it like appearing on Father Ted and working with people like uh, Ardo O'Hanlon and Dermot Morgan? What was it like? Actually, it's funny because there, I, when I was living in Bowman, there was a girl uh, who lived in, in, in my house. And she was like, when I say a Father Ted fan, like she was obsessed, right? She was absolutely obsessed. And when I told her that I was going for an audition for Father Ted, like she was like, just couldn't believe you. You're going for an audition for Father Ted. <laughs> so... And I said, yeah, 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 yeah. So I think anyone who told a joke in the 1990s got onto Father Ted, Jack. You know, <laughs> but it was, uh, I got the part anyway. And um, I came back and I told Jackie, and I said, by the way, I got the part in Father Ted. And she just absolutely lost it. And, you know, she, she was more excited than I would ever be for it. Now, I was delighted, but she was actually... Uh, completely like you know she and she was so I told her anyway I told her that she could come down with me you know I said, what do you think I could come down oh yeah 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 come on down so she came down on the um we came down with the Friday down to Ennis Diamond that's where it was all shot that's where the house is you know just outside Ennis and we we arrived down there we booked into the Falls Hotel and we went up to Eugene's pub which is up the road in Ennis Diamond. And when we went in to Eugene's pub, it was the bizarrest, you know, surreal image because Father Ted was on, one of the one of the episodes was on TV in Eugene's. And Darren McMorgan, uh, Ardell O'Hanlon and Frank, you know, where Father Jack were looking at the episode there at the bar. It was bizarre as thing. So Jackie, my 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 colleague, was when she saw like the whole crew there, like she was like it was like a you know, back in the day it was like a 14-year-old meeting one direction. You know what I mean? So so we, we there was a, a snooker table upstairs and it was one of those snooker tables, you know where you where the, the snooker table, one side of it is up really close against the wall. So to have a, a shorter queue so she can actually stop so she won't bang your head banging your hand off the uh, off the wall. So uh, it was myself and uh, I went up and Ardle was there and there was another lad um who's actually uh, he was in train spotting and uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head he's in Grey's Anatomy as well but anyway he, uh, two of them were there and they said how are you Brendan how's it going listen do you want a game of snooker or a game of pool and I said yeah hang on I'll get a fourth person so I got Jackie so it was Jackie and Ardle against myself and the other chap so she like she was looking at me like going <laughs> <laughs> So for her, it was it was a it was like um, a weekend in Disneyland for her, you know. And it was great crack. It really was. It was it was it was great fun and the, the whole weekend. Gee, and uh, it, it, you mentioned Eugene's bar. I remember that bar appearing later in one of the episodes. I think it was Chirpy Burpy Cheap Sheep. So it's funny that you even went over to where that bar was. Uh, that bar as oh. well. Um, 
And as well as that, like, did you expect at the time that the Christmas special that you appeared in would still be a classic episode that people even last Christmas were looking at? Like, I was looking at it with the family. We saw you and I was like, oh, there's Brendan. No, no, Jack. No, no, no. Hang on a second. Your mother told you there's Brendan but because I am not recognizable. I had hair then. <laughs> I had a black mustache. I was like something out of, yeah, you know, the YMCA. It was, it was, it was, I, I didn't even recognize myself when I saw it there a while back, you know, so, um, but it, it was something that was tapped into that hadn't been done before. And it, it, you know, two great writers and it was like full of belly laughs and it was really, really funny, you know, and um, I think maybe it was at a time as well where, you know, the Irish people were kind of getting a little bit sort of um, peeved with the Catholic Church and stuff like that. So there was, a, there was a little bit of sort of ha 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 about it. Do you know what I mean? A, a little bit of, you know, two fingers, you know, sort of to the to the to the to the institution, you know. So um, no offense to any Catholics out there, of course. You know what I mean? But it it, it was genuinely funny. It really was, and. It's like, it's like, you know, comedy nowadays, it has to be something that hasn't been done before. You know, there's, there's, this, there's a whole like mishmash of previous types of comedy over the years that have been, as I said, rehashed. And, but this was, this was unique. It's like Ricky Gervais in the office. You know, that was unique, a unique type of comedy, you know, like cringe comedy, you know, and that nobody else really did that. Maybe Alan Partridge a bit, but Ricky Gervais, I thought, like really brought it to the fore in 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 the office, and the same with Father Ted. It was it was something that had never been done before. But the bottom line was, it was it was genuinely funny, you know. Let's move on to now your photography work because uh, why not? So how did you actually become a photographer? Actually, well, I took a I I I used to <clears throat> I enjoyed photography years ago i um i was i was a hobby basically that's what it was and uh i was down in doolan one weekend uh back in 2008 took a photograph of a friend of mine with her dog and she said oh can i have that and i said of course you can and so i gave it to her our friend wanted to know who took the photograph she contacted me so i took photographs for her dogs and uh so i started um doing it as a project so um and i really enjoyed it i'm a big dog lover and it kind of re you know reignited my photography again so uh, what happened was when i was in fair city then jim barkley who plays bella i i i, um, I, I asked him if he had a dog and he brought the dog in and i took a photograph of him with his dog outside the against the hedge outside rt and someone saw it and they told me to put it into the National Shield Award, which is this big Irish photographic federation who had thing. So I put it in for the laugh and I won. So I was not only, I wasn't an actor or a comedian anymore. I was an award winning photographer, Jack. You know that? I was, you know, Brendan Burke, oh, the award winning photographer. That's the chap. That's the very chap, the award winning photographer. So, uh, that kind of spurred me on then and uh, Pat Kenny saw the photograph and he really liked it so he wanted his photographs taken so I went up to his house and we did photographs and you know he he really I said to him so you're a busy man Pat this is going to take a couple of hours well the dogs will give you 30 seconds of their time but he gave me a big plug on the radio show next morning and uh, it just took off so I started meeting different people from different walks of life and I, I'd be on a, I'd be, I'd be on a, you know, traveling somewhere and I end up sitting beside either a TV producer or a, a host of some show or whatever. You get chatting and they'd say, what do you do? And I'd say, well, I take photographs of people with their dogs. Oh, would you come on the show? And it kind of took off then. So then I started getting photographs of fairly well-known people, you know, and that's, they blogged about it. You know, so when I say fairly well-known people like, you know, Tommy Tiernan and um, Brendan O'Carroll and Bernard Dunn, the boxer, and Rosanna Davis and, and, and Ken Doherty and, you know, people that would be fairly well-known. So, and, uh, and that got me on the Late Late Show then as well, 
they, they put four of those photographs up on easels on the floor and the audience had to guess who the, who the person was with their dog. They blackened off the face, you see. So, uh, and Ryan Tuberty gave me huge plugs. So the name Shoot My Dog, you see, is part of the success as well with the photography because it really is a fairly unique name, you know? Yeah, great name. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, and I actually thought at the beginning that there was a lot of people going to be offended. There was, you know, I can count on one hand the number of people, you know, because when people see the name, they go, what? And then they see the photographs and they go, all oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> but you get, you get different reactions to it, you know? Yeah. It's a good clickbait. You see it and it's like, shoot my dog. Oh, hold on a minute. What's this about? This is murdering a dog? Oh, no, pictures. They're nice. <laughs> Um, I, I normally do the trade shows, you see, and I had the horse show, and at the horse show, see, I have my name, the, it's a, the normal stalls, and I have my name up behind me, or the, the, the name of my business, Shoot My Dog, written behind me, and you get what I would call the, the Dermots and the Nulas coming up to me, and they look at my photographs and go, oh my God, Dermot, look at these photographs, um, let's get this for Fikra, you know, oh my God, Forlock would love this. So the clippity cloppities, the Dermots and the Noodles, as I call them, right? And out of the blue, this couple came up to me and they both looked as if they were lost. They were both in tracksuits. They, they looked, both of them looked as if they were on something. And this is like straight after all the clippity cloppities, you know, oh my God, Dermot, that's just amazing photography. And he came up to me and he said to me with a real serious face, he says, excuse me. And his, like, his partner was standing behind. And uh, he says to me, excuse me, uh, would you have a business called Shoot My Wife? <laughs> and I said to him, is she a dog? And he said, she look at the style of her. And she went, ah, ah, and the two of them just walked off. So you get strange reactions, Jack. That is a strange reaction there. That is uh, the reaction of all reactions. Oh, yeah. You get some, sometimes you get people, like if I do an ad on Facebook, you get some people go, oh, my God, that's a, you know, could you not think of some other name? And I just say to them, aha, but it made you look, you see, you know. It's just words. It's just, it's just playing with words. That's all it is. <laughs> and actually, which do you prefer, the acting, the comedian work, or the photography? Which sort of do you like the most? Well, I'd like them all, but there's only 24 hours in a day, Jack. You know, it's not room for doing both, really, because I'm really busy with the photography. Um, I do miss the comedy, for sure, you know. But at the shoots, actually, the shoots aren't, aren't um, they're not dry. You know what I mean? That they're, like, you know, we have a good laugh at the shoots. And, you know, I'm, I don't go into someone's living room and go, how are you, any Americans in the audience while I'm taking photographs of somebody with their dog? You know, it's, it's, it's uh, we, we just chat and we have the laugh and, you know, what I mean, I suppose maybe, you know, the comedy comes into it, but, um, but I do miss the stand up. I do, I do miss it, I suppose, you know, but, um, but in the current climate though, I'm glad I have something else because, no, com no stand up at the moment. But when, whenever that clears, do you plan to ever come back to comedy to give it a go again or something like that? Or? No, I wouldn't. I, of course, I'd, 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 I mean, I I do it this time though without, but without trying to push myself. Do you know what I mean? I used to like, I I, I used to try and do a bit of self promotion. You know what I mean? And uh, but I just do it now to to for the laugh, for the, to to enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? The laughter lounge is close by. You know, I wouldn't be interested in going over to England. You know, I used to go every weekend to England, do you know what I mean, to do a gig. And, um, you know, so no more. I wouldn't be doing that. Staying in the um, Travel Lodge Hotel for the whole weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and come back on Sunday, you know, and you close that door on your own for the weekend in your cell. Has there been any other acting in movies or t other TV shows that you've done that you'd like to highlight or any other comedy work you've done as well? Been on a, a good few of the, you know, the chat shows and, and, and stuff like that. But um, see, at the, see, the way it is, life has slightly changed for me now, Jack, you see. 
you see, because I, 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 I'm not the, the young stud like yourself anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like I going out there into the wild world. You know, I'm now, now a, you know, a daddy by two, and uh, you know, and I, I, and I don't, I don't do the drinking thing anymore. You see, stand up comedy really is a young man's game. You know, because you, you go to London for the weekend and you're bouncing from one gig to the next to the next. Like I was explaining, I was explaining in Edinburgh. You know, you're just going from one gig to the other and you're you're staying in these dodgy hotels or wherever. Do you know what I mean? See, when you get to my age, uh, Jack, you want your comforts. Do you know? Mm-hmm. And see, when you're, you see, when I was your age, you see, I used to comb my hair like you because I had hair. I used to look at myself in the mirror. <laughs> now I get a shock. <laughs> so I'm looking, after, I'm looking after two little girls now and my photography is, uh, I really enjoy it. <laughs> oh, you still have the comedy in you that's for sure <laughs> and uh you, you also have a dog yourself as well do you uh take pictures of your dog and you know sort of to get some practice in well i don't really need i wouldn't uh, practice wouldn't be needed anymore i don't i don't think but um frankie is the most photographed dog in the universe if we ever find another planet out there and um, they find other dogs in, in another planet. Frankie will still be the most photograph dog in the entire universe. <laughs> There'll be more photographs of Frankie than, than, your, than, than you in your mother's phone. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see There's about that. There's how many photographs. We'll see about that. <laughs> Because there is a loss in my on my mama's phone. <laughs> no shit, your <laughs> luck. <laughs> oh god! Well, <laughs> that one all said. Thank you very much, Brenda, for coming on. Is there any last things you'd like to say? Any socials you want to plug in? Yeah. No, no social. There used to be the time. Yeah, I'm doing a gig here and I'm doing a gig there. You know, the only thing there, there. Shoot my dog. Dot ie. Look at that photograph. Not beautiful. You see. There's there's art now. That woman loved her dog, and that dog loved that woman. Shoot my dog. Dot I. Not shoot my wife. Shoot my dog. <laughs> well, Brendan, thank you very much for coming on, and uh, yeah, speak to you soon.